So DaVinci Resolve 17 has been a game changing update and there have been so many different changes and new features added that it is so hard to keep track of all the things that are going on. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna teach you the eight biggest changes to the edit page in DaVinci Resolve 17. So all of that stuff and more coming up. But first, if you're new here, my name is Billy Ripka and I make weekly DaVinci Resolve tutorials about different effects, transitions, and workflows that help you become a better editor. So if you wanna level up your editing skills, click that subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on the newest videos put out. But let's get into it. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the auto cut detector. Now. First off, this has been around in DaVinci Resolve for a while now. It's been in the media page. However, it was incredibly challenging to use and really nobody <laughs> ever used it because they couldn't find it. But now in DaVinci Resolve 17, it's on the edit page, baby. What it's gonna do is analyze your clip and find every single cut and make a cut exactly there. So on our timeline in DaVinci Resolve, I have the Tenant trailer, by the way, awesome movie. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out, it's so good. So if I wanna make a cut at every single scene change in this trailer, that would obviously take forever. But what I can do is highlight the clip and go up to timeline right here and go down all the way to detect scene cuts and then click on it. Now it's gonna just go ahead and detect every single time that a scene changes and make a cut there. So now that it's done, you can see that there is a cut every single time the scene changes and it is super cool. So now moving on to number two, we have the sync audio on the edit tab feature. This has been a long requested feature and we finally have it. So on our timeline here, I have three clips. Now, if I wanna sync these up because they all have the same audio source, you can't sync it up with all of the audio on one video track. So we have to take each separate recording and move it one track below like this. So now all we're gonna do is highlight everything that we want to be synced up, right click and go to auto align clips right here. And we wanna go based on waveform. So it's gonna quickly analyze your clips and then sync them up just like this. By the way, you can probably tell I'm sick. I sound sick. My voice doesn't sound normal. It's not the Rona, I promise, okay? I'm all good. Now moving on to number three, we have proxies. Finally, there is a proxy workflow that actually is super convenient and it's just so good. It's beautiful. Guys, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, seriously, this is huge. By the way, if you don't know what proxies are, they're ultimately just lower resolution versions of your high quality footage that is a lot easier for a program like DaVinci Resolve to work with. So to do that, we're gonna highlight all of our clips just like this and take out our timeline because we don't want that. Now just right click and go to generate proxy media right here. And DaVinci Resolve is gonna go ahead and create a version of this footage that is easier for the program to read. Now once your proxies are done rendering and all that good stuff, you wanna make sure that, you know, you're actually using them. So to do that, you're gonna go to the playback right here and we're gonna make sure that use proxy media if available is checked and you'll see that there was a small change right here in our preview window so now if we just play it back you can see that our footage is just moving so much smoother and so much easier now the best thing about these proxies is that it actually generates a file of its own so instead of optimized media which was just purely stored within cache files this is is a separate file altogether and you can share it around to your friends. You can do whatever you want with it. It is beautiful. It is wonderful. I love it. And if you wanna change the codec that you're rendering these proxies in, you could totally do that. If we go down to the project settings right here and under master settings, we just scroll down. You can see that optimized media and render cache is right there. Well, now we have proxy media resolution. We can change the proxy media format from this codec right here to let's say something that's gonna be a little smaller in file size like DNxHRLB. It's going to generate the proxy media using that codec. Moving on to number four, we have the overall UI changes in the effects preview window. This is just so awesome. Check this out. You can actually preview the animations and we can preview every single effect and or title before we drag it into our actual composition. And we can do that with every single one of these, like in the effects tab, we can go and check out what CCTV is and colored border. And we don't have to drag it in like this, realize that we hate it, hit control Z 
and just keep trying. We can just view it. Now on to number five, we had the Resolve FX keys. So this right here brings compositing, brings green screen keying and luma keying and all of that stuff to the edit page. You don't have to go into Fusion. You could just do it right here and this is super cool. So in DaVinci Resolve, what we'll do is go to the effects library right here and then scroll down to open effects then scroll down a little bit and you'll see this thing right here that says resolve FX keys. So we have this thing called a 3D keyer, we have the HSL keyer, we have the Luma keyer, we have all these things right here. Because we have green screen, I'm gonna grab the 3D keyer and drag it onto my footage like this. Now in the inspector tab, I'm gonna open the effects tab up right here. By the way, whole new inspector tab. That's pretty sick, isn't it? Anyway, under controls, you'll see this eyedropper right here. And if I click on it, nothing's gonna happen. And it's kind of annoying, right? You think that it's broken, but it's actually not. So to make this work, we have to go to the bottom left of the preview window right here and hit the drop down arrow, then scroll down to the open effects overlay. Now all you're gonna do is click and draw over this green right here that we wanna key out, and you'll see that it's just gonna disappear like that. Then to get rid of any of this weird green spill over here, all we do is hit despill and it goes away. You can see it just completely removed the green from the keyboard like this. Look at that, completely gone. Now, if you wanna replace the screen with something else, you can totally just go ahead and do that, which also brings us on to our number six, which is the transform open effects. So in our media pool, first off, I have a picture right here and I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it above our keyed out green screen layer like this. Then in the effects library, I'm gonna type in transform. Grab it and drag it onto the layer that we want to become our new screen like this. Now I'll click on the clip and in the inspector tab, we're going to click effects. So we have the transform right here and we have a bunch of different controls. I want to do something called corner pinning. Usually to do that, you'd have to go into fusion. However, under control modes right here, you can hit interactive pins. Now you'll see this border appear. What we're going to do is align all of these corners with the corners on our laptop. So I just move a few things around, grab each corner like this, and the image distorts and warps so that the perspective actually matches what you're going for. We used to have to go into Fusion for this, now we can do this with the edit page. Obviously this would not pass as a great screen replacement. This is just to show you guys that it is possible to do this stuff now. Now moving on to number seven, we have render in place. Now don't mistake this with generate proxies. It's different. What render in place is gonna do is if we have those high quality transitions or titles that just bog down our system, what we can do is zoom in and move back one frame, make a cut right there, and then go to the other side of the transition like this, make a cut, and then highlight all of this, right click and go to new compound clip. And that's just because we want our transition and our clips to be viewed as one. Now, just right click, go to render in place. And now it's gonna ask you the formats and codecs that you wanna use. You just go ahead and hit like, you know, DN, X, H, R, and then let's say use the uh, the LB right here, right? Then click render. Then it's gonna ask you where you wanna save this. So let's just say our desktop and let it render. Once it's actually finished, you can see that our compound clip has been replaced with an actual MOV file. This right here is gonna ultimately give us the ability to speed up our render times because instead of having to process all that information, it's already been done. It's in an MOV file. It's all good. Now, moving on to number eight, we have Smart Reframe. Now, I briefly touched on this in my top five features of DaVinci Resolve 17 video, but if some of you haven't seen it, this feature right here is super cool. So, what it allows us to do is make social media content super simple. So, if we wanted to turn this clip right here into a social media post, what we do is go down to the project settings right here. Then under timeline resolution, we change it to something like 1080 by 1080. Now you'll see these black bars appear and we just want to get rid of them by increasing the zoom like this. However, if we move forward, you can see that the lady really doesn't stay in the center of the frame and it's kind of like drifting off here. Now this right here is where Smart Reframe comes in and works his magic. So in the inspector tab, we have Smart Reframe right here. We'll just hit the drop down menu. Then under object of interest, we can have auto or reference point, but right now we're just gonna stick auto, then hit reframe. And now DaVinci Resolve is gonna work its magic. And once it's done, you can see that this lady right here 
stays in the center of our frame the whole time because of smart reframe. This one feature right here can speed up the workflow of people who produce social media content with just the click of a button. So what's your favorite change to the edit page? Let me know in the comments below. And also, if you think something else should be added to this list, let me know down in the comments also. Anyway, if you thought this video was helpful, give it a like and also share it with your friends so that they can know about the eight biggest features in DaVinci Resolve 17. And if you want more videos like this, click the top for a playlist with all of my DaVinci Resolve tutorials or click on the bottom for a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. But until the next one, peace.